Hello guys, it's Stephen here, back with a very quick transfer target today. I wanted to cover a few things that I couldn't talk about yesterday because I didn't have the time in the video and so on. And it's been a little bit of information that broke during the recording of that video, including a signing, including a few exits, and a little bit of information on a few players. But before I get on to the actual transfer target, as ever, a quick run-up with a little bit of news. Terence Congolo has signed for Monaco. If you don't know how symbolic that is, he's a left-back, which means Benjamin Mendy may be on his way to Manchester City. It looks like they got the replacement for only like 13, 14 million euros, which is... Probably going to be a bargain, and we'll probably give him a 45 to 50 million euros of Mendy, but that's their problem, I guess. And Alves, no news on that front yet, but I'm, I'm starting to wonder if we'll just do that a little bit later, because it looks like we've definitely got him. And in general, Wondering City are going to say to him, don't worry about it. We'll sort out the contract and all that kind of stuff when you arrive at preseason because there's no point interrupting his holiday, getting him all the way over from Brazil just to sign it, just to send him back off for a week, just to have him back in Manchester only a week and a half later. I'm wondering if they may just delay this until he's actually there and do his medical, do his interview, all that kind of stuff then. So we'll see about that. But anyway, let's get on to the actual transfer target. And there's a new signing, kind of a new signing, not official, but also official. It's come from Pep Guardiola's mouth. Pep has been telling the press that we've signed Eric Garth and that he's very excited to see him play. He hasn't been on City's Twitter yet, but he's only 16 years old. Uh, clubs don't tend to promote 16-year-old signings that much. So I'm suspecting this would be one of those things where he just turns up for the under 18s and he's playing football. Eric Garcia, what do we know about him? Not much, if I'm being honest, other than the fact that he's really, really highly rated by Barcelona's academy. Uh, their La Masia academy has had a bit of a decline recently, losing a lot of very talented players, and he's the latest in a long line of players that have looked elsewhere for their future careers. He's also represented by Carlos Puyol, quite famously slagged off La Marzia, obviously uh, to the detriment of his relationship with Barcelona's fans, but that's not of our problem, let's be honest. I'm not expecting we'll see him anytime soon. He is only going to be a first-year scholar given his age next season. Maybe he'll step up quickly to the EDS, but he's only just turned 16 recently, so I'm expecting we'll see him with the under-80s mainly, and maybe eventually be one of those players that goes on loan to Gironi if he's as good as people say he is. And the rumours are he's very much like PK in terms of his composure, a good size, strong and very much a leader, and that will do me, I'll be honest. But yeah, don't get your hopes up for seeing any time soon. He's obviously one for the future. And one player is very much for the here and now, if we sign him, is Ryan Bertrand. He's gone a little bit quiet on that front, but now the Mirror is saying that City firmly believe that they can get him, but Southampton are blocking his moves to Manchester City, which I think just means they're rejecting a bid, which they've got every right to do, if we're being totally honest. So how dare you, Southampton, block a move for a player that you own? But anyway, I'm hopelessly hoping that they don't in the end and that we get him because I think Bertrand's a fantastic player. He's a very solid, reliable, but also intelligent left back who, who has a bit of everything to his game, a really solid all-rounder. Uh, I think he would excel under Guardiola. I think he in general would, would be a great counterpoint, a great alternative to Mendy, who obviously I reckon will have one or two struggles when he does sign, if he does sign uh, in the Premier League. Any player tends to have a slow betting in period. Might not, but I suspect that would be normal. And Bertrand's reliability and his Premier League experience and his, obviously his hunger of nature and the fact that he's a good footballer, for me, would make him a great option at left-back. And I want two quality fullbacks because we've been starved for a long time of decent fullbacks. Uh, they've all been getting on. I love Zaba, I love Sanya, and at some point I quite like Clichy and Colin too, but their best days are long behind them. So the idea of having two young, uh, viable options at left back would be very good as far as I'm concerned. And maybe it's a reaction to the news yesterday on Transfer Target where we talked about Kolov potentially leaving. Maybe if that happens, we really need to force this through a little bit. And on to another fullback, another fullback. How many times have I said that this window? I've lost count. Someone will probably tell me in the comments. It's all we talk about. But anyway, Kyle Walker, uh, apparently the independent saying City are still negotiating a fee with Spurs. No deal has been agreed yet. Obviously, Spurs have got a very strong bargaining position there and obviously no rush to sell one of their best players. But I still think this will happen, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, I think in general, uh, the Walker thing will take a little bit of time. It might be one of those that runs near close to the season, but that'll probably be okay as long as Walker gets something close to some pre-season fitness with Spurs. Uh, I, think, I think it'll happen eventually. I think Spurs are willing for this to happen. I think they understand that the players' heads might be elsewhere. Um, but I think that the, the fee will take a little bit of haggling. But I'm not concerned. I think Walker wants to be on the City player. I think Walker will be a City player but Spurs are just famously tough to deal with. I think the idea of uh, Walker and Alves, and fingers crossed that's already done if it's not done soon, it will be I'm sure uh, those two as our fullback options once again, as discussed previously, the last back in terms of Mendy and Bertram potentially, that's just a vast upgrade in what we had previously and it'd be phenomenal to see how much our team actually increases with uh, the dynamism, intelligence, the attacking ability, all four of those players would potentially bring. That to me would be the biggest upgrade on us in terms of 
our ability as a team, as an 11, it would be having those players be able to bomb forward and offer wide uh, attacking options that we've not had from fullbacks for a long time now. But yeah, we've got to be patient. That is the word of the transfer window. It's only July still. Preseason still doesn't start for another two weeks. So fingers crossed that one will be over the line soon. And on to another fullback. This one is leaving though. Angelino. It's all about fullbacks, isn't it? Angelino this time though has joined the NEC Braided Lone Crew. He joins his teammates, Fernandez, Ambrose, and so on, over there in the Eredivisie. And um hopefully this will be a good move for him. It's been a weird couple of years for Angelino. A very, very encouraging play. In fact, he was excellent last year in preseason. I think everyone thought he was gonna be um a bit of a standout player, maybe. Uh, last year, but it just didn't happen for him. And I'm, I hold my hands up there. I thought he would be involved a lot more under Pep, but it just didn't happen. But fair enough, it didn't happen, and sometimes it doesn't for a young lad. He went on loan to Girona, got no game time there, and went on loan to Mallorca. He got relegated, but he got a bit of game time at left back there. Hopefully, a season in the Eredivisie, which is famously welcoming to attacking based players and he's attacking based fullback definitely and um, hopefully he'll get a chance to show how good he can actually be I firm believe that Evangelino had been playing first team football somewhere like um, Grimaldo has from the age of 18 and so on that he'd probably be worth a lot more than he is now but for whatever reason it just not happened to him but you've got to be patient with young lads look at Harry Kane's loans over the years they were incredibly underwhelming at Spurs and all of a sudden he, uh, he blossomed into this top class forward one of the best players in the league and what's to say someone like Angelino with his energy, his desire his work rate and his ability can't become a very useful left back, we've just got to be patient and see how he gets on but maybe this could be the loan, surrounded by some of his friends and his teammates that could see him rocket into what we know he could be, fingers crossed but anyway Angelino, good luck over in the Eredivisie, I'm sure you'll take him by storm and Wilfred Bowley, bless him he's been talking a lot in the press in the past couple of days about how he wants to fight for his future at Manchester City, yeah I've probably got more chance than you have Wilfred let's be honest there, I know that sounds incredibly patronising but if there was ever a man who was less fitted for a Guardiola style of play it was probably Wilfred Bowley, I feel a bit sorry for him, he was obviously really good a couple of years ago when we signed him but I don't know what happened sometimes it just doesn't work out and City are pretty good at doing that whole messing up your career thing, losing all your ability of form and flogging you on a loan to some club in the far corner of the world somewhere but that's what we do and that's why we're Manchester City but that's also why I love them but sorry Wilfred but anyway it's been a tough couple of years for him but I'm sure locked away in somewhere in there is still that striker he scored 30 goals a season he was obviously excellent for Swansea which is why we bought him but it's not happened all that dynamism that power the energy that that kind of confidence, the arrogance, it seems to have faded away. But now there are rumours that he's looked in talks with Besiktas and Fenerbahce to go over there permanently, which I think would be a decent move for him. I'm sure he's got plenty of goals over there. I think in general he just needs to leave Manchester City permanently. Um, I think alone would be bad for him. I don't think it, I don't think Lowe's ever good for an older striker. I think he just needs to get a new home find his feet there, find his confidence, and hopefully become the player that he once was, because he seems like an alright bloke, Wilfred Boney. He had a very hard time, obviously, with the malaria and his illness and his injury, and he just needs to get into a running age and shot him somewhere. I reckon away from England is probably best for him, but Wilfred, I would say move there if you can, mate, but good luck if you do. On to another forgotten man, Joe Hart, the man that uh, no one seems to care about anymore, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. His whole world seems to crumble down around him. He's obviously... Had a very different season at Torino. He's got a lot of critics for his performances with England. And in general, seems to be very unwelcome at Manchester City, if we're being totally honest. Um, and now it seems that like Newcastle want him alone. Another club that wants him alone. As a lot of clubs are saying that they don't want to sign him permanently because they can't afford his wages, they can't afford the fee. But he still must have some sway. When you look at what Pickford went to for Everton, given the fact that... Uh, uh, Hart is technically still ahead of him for England you'd, you'd expect he would at least claim half that fee but we're struggling to even get 10 million for Joe Hart I don't want to see him go on loan again I think that's negative for everyone involved I want to see him leave I've said a lot on these transfer target videos that the idea of shifting these senior players off on loan constantly is negative I think it's there uh, I don't think it solves anyone's situations. I think it decreases their value. I think we should even just take a slight hit if we have to to get rid of him. I think everyone would be happier. I know it's not ideal, but we're not. If we, if we can't get ten million now this season for Hart, we're not going to get it next season. I'm almost certain that I, I would take seven, eight million personally for him. Take a small loss just to know that it's probably the best we're going to be able to get. Maybe they won't, but Newcastle on loan. If he went to Newcastle in general, I'm sure he'd do very well there. I'm sure the, the St. James's faithful would enjoy him. But for me, he's another one that just needs to move on for his own good, for everyone's own good. Um, but I'm sure we'll see something because I can't see him going into the season behind Bravo and Edison personally. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. Just a quick update for you there. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see or discuss on the next video. I'm away this weekend, actually, so I'm not sure when the next transfer target will actually be. And also, if you haven't already, go and subscribe to my new gaming channel where there will be videos soon. I promise you, very soon, just you know.
getting warmed up and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, guys, I will see you next time.